Hey guys, this video is going to be about the feed ramp and investigating any failures to feed you may have or any issues you may have. And if you can relate it down to just a magazine and other magazines work fine, you may want to consider not messing with this. But let me put it on macro, get it up here in the light, and I think if I get this at the right angle here, do you see the shiny bits? Yeah. See, everything else is pretty much filthy black from carbon and everything. I don't see hardly any wear marks. The only little wear mark I'm seeing is right there. And you see how there's a transition from the uh, chamber to the feed ramp? Okay. Well, now the deal is okay, that a cartridge, I don't think I have one in my hand right now. Mm. Did I bring one with me? Yeah, because I wanted to show this. That the cartridge does not the cartridge does not seat all the way in. See how it, it goes to right there? Okay. And when it comes up, okay, it does a bunch of different things. It comes up like that almost. And so it's actually nosing off of the top of this, okay, which I think I can rotate and show you. I don't know if I'll be able to get up in there and macro. This, this the lens is closer to this side. I get some good light on it. You can see some little marks up there. And so it could be that doing something to ease the top of that might help. But if you see a bright, shiny mark on your... I don't mind that little bit of swarf in there. If you see a bright, shiny mark, you can bet that that's something going on. You can see where the bullet's sliding up. Then it, it changes angle skips along and then it smacks into that little ridge and I think that's what's causing the issues. I would like this gun to feed with any kind of magazine I put in it because apparently there's three different kinds of these carbine magazines out there with three different kinds of followers and I bet you they have three different kinds of lips and everything because I have two mags and they're completely different lips. One's a bent angled lip and one's a curved formed lip. The one with the bent angled lip doesn't work good. So if I can get it to work good, I'd be a happy camper. So that's why I'm just spending some time looking at this, guys, because once you take material away, you can't put it back. And if you start changing things around and it makes it not feed good, you know, then you've not accomplished your mission. So allow me to show you what I have done, I hope, to make this a wonderful thing. So let me go back into macro mode. Okay, I blended the little machined part on up, got rid of that little lip that was catching everything, and then I polished it after sanding it up. So, who knows? I'm gonna try it out, put it back together. Yes, yes, everything's back together as you can see, and uh, what I wanted to show you here on macro is the distinct difference between these magazine lips. You can see them pretty good in the shop right here. See the sharp angle on that one? Right in here. That's like a fold. It's a angle. And then you look over on this one and it's rounded. It's even more obvious from this side. As you can see it's a nice rounded sheet lip. And then you look at this one and you can see it's just a sharp angle. I'm not really sure how to reform that or change that, but I'm hoping that the work that I just did on the carbine will make it uh, cycle everything regardless. It's, it's much smoother now. I've got everything all nice and smooth and lubricated and put together and everything. So let me run the bad mag through it and see what happens. Okay, so this is the one that doesn't run so great. Which one is it? Yeah, this is the one because it has this sharp angle to it. So let's see if this one works. Let me just set the camera up where you can, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to watch me or not. Hmm, good question. Let me put it over here. Kind of aim it 
like this, and then you can kind of look over my shoulder, see what I'm up to here. Let's see where am I going to be? I'm going to be about right here. So, all right. So, problematic magazine. Let's get the whole side on. Okay. Problematic magazine, and we'll just see about getting it to fire. Okay. Hopefully, yep, looks like I'm in frame here. Here we go. Nope, exact same feeding issue. Exact same malfunction. Yeah, that was really a drag. Now, let's try with the good bag and make sure I didn't ruin the feed ramp. So the good mag runs like a beast, and the bad mag is not. So what's up with that? Why? Why? My children always say, why? Okay. Okay. Yep, did the exact same thing. You can't really trick it in there either, because once it's screwed, it's screwed. You drop it out. magazine feeds worse now. So as long as I only put <laughs> seven rounds in it, I guess this must be a New York magazine. It's only supposed to have seven rounds in it. Because if I put more than seven rounds in the son of a gun, it's... <sighs> what is that? Why would it do that? That's weird. So it's got to be something to do maybe with the follower and with the spray tension. So maybe even though I can't change the lips, maybe I can do something to it. I don't know, guys. But this is the problem mag for sure. The other mag runs like a damn champ. So these followers are weird. Check this out. You can kick the whole thing up like this. This one I can't. Oh, yeah, I can I wanted to, I could kick it all the way back. This one kicks back pretty easy. So there's something just weird about this whole magazine design. And I'm just wondering if there's something about the profile of the follower that isn't quite right. Something about the, the way the lips are bent that isn't quite right. I'm going to check out the width of them. Okay, so here's the good mag. Let's see if I can get the calipers in frame for you. And at this point right here, which is where I'm seeing the difference, I'm getting like 0.492, okay, right there, show you where that is, right where that notch is, okay, so I'm measuring there, I get 4.92, and when I was measuring this, I was getting 4.4975, and I just put it in the vise and I squished it. And now I'm down to 0.4925 around in there. But what I'm seeing, if you look at these puppies side by side, you'll see that the magazine that's running good, I don't know, I'm trying to get a good shot for you guys, the magazine that's running good, the follower sits lower. See, you, you don't see as much. See how much you almost see, what, like a 30 second more coming up there, right, which makes me think that, that the way this is curved, it's holding the follower down more, and because this is bent, it's letting the follower come up more, and I don't really know if there's any way for me to adjust that. I was thinking about maybe trying to pinch this a little bit, just a little bit, because I do see it has tines on it, so that could be adjustable a little bit, you know. I'm going to squeeze that in the vise and see what happens. Okay, guys, after a little work with the vise, okay, this is the good mag. I'm just going to push down the plunger this way so I'm not doing anything weird with my finger, right? And when I let it up, let me put it on there real quick. Okay, do you see how that is? Okay. All right, now I'll push this. This is the other mag. Okay, 
push that up and down a couple times so it will be random like it's supposed to. Okay, go back to macro here. Okay, so I've gotten rid of that overhang by a great deal. I'm going to put them side by side. Much closer. Still a little bit more, but that's good. And the measurements across the width of them are exactly on now. So, time to go up to the house, get more ammo, and uh, run them again and see if it worked this time. Okay, guys, here's the problem mag that I worked on in the vise and tried to change the dimensions of and get the follower to sit differently. And uh, let's try that out here. Let me put this over here again. Hopefully we'll be able to uh, be able to watch what I'm doing and see what I'm up to here and see how it's flying. And hopefully I'm on frame. Let's see if I find out. Okay. Alright, right, let's charge it. Let's try it with some rapid fire. Genius! And I want to thank everyone who gave me advice on this and things to look for. I believe it was N D Cooey, N D C O U E Y, who said, "Look at those mag lips, man. They, you know, the magazines may not be the right width." So here's the deal. Let me wipe this lens off real quick. Here's the deal, guys. If the magazine isn't running right, make sure your high point follower on the magazine on your high point mag is almost. Just, just sitting right above it like you saw in this video. And if it isn't, you can put it in a vise between a couple blocks of wood and squish it a little bit. you got to hold the follower down, though, because it will keep it from squishing. So you got to hold the follower down, squish it, check it, squish it, check it. Don't overdo it. And, uh, hey, now I've got two mags at work, guys. I'm psyched. I probably didn't even have to polish the feed ramp, but I'm happy I did. I always like doing stuff like that. So, guys, that's it on uh, not just diagnosing, but curing the FTF, the failure to feed. So now I've got two mags that are rocking.